Hey, uh, YouTube, welcome to my home. Um, my home is a home to a lot of electronics, and, I, and all puns intended. Um, I literally live with every aspect of home electronics that I sell. I test things here, um, lighting control, the whole nine yards. So I, I wanna talk a little bit about automation and lighting control and some of its capabilities. Uh, we won't do a full walkthrough of the house. I'll, I'll do a lot of talking and a lot of showing. Hey, Josh, turn on all the lights in the kitchen. We're gonna circle back to that guy in a second. Uh, that's Josh AI. And uh, it's like a virtual assistant for your house, vo voice assistant. Far beyond Alexa, far beyond Google Home, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing I wanna talk about is lighting control. <clears throat> and this is really, really important because I meet with a lot of clients and then I have to meet with their electricians and stuff like that. And I tell them there's two kinds of, there's three ways to do lighting. The first way is to have an ugly bank of lights in your kitchen, ugly bank of lights in your foyer, um, all kinds of stuff, and that's fine. That's how every house is. The second way is panelized lighting, which is a fancy keypad like this, and there's a panel up in your attic, okay? And up in your attic, there's this big metal panel, and it costs a 100 grand to do, and it's super, super expensive. And then there's something I call poor man's panelized lighting, which is what I tell all my clients to do and what I did. So what I tell uh, electricians to do, and it takes a, a second, and it takes a meeting, a couple of meetings, but I say, look, if you wanna get rid of the five banks of light switches, right, and go down to something like this in your foyer, in your living room, in your kitchen, you know, stuff like that, um, you have to train your electrician to take the other four and put them in a closet. So you take four light switches, put them around the corner, pantries, water closets, I mean, anywhere, right, hide them. So these are, these are my, this is my keypad in my, in, my, uh, in my kitchen where I can turn on music, I can just turn on, I can just toggle on and off the pendants, I can toggle on and off the counters. So I've got some, some zone control here. I can entertain and at nighttime, I can, turn, I can hit that night button and literally everything in my house turns off, everything in my house turns off. TVs, audio, video, outside TVs, um, outside audio, ceiling fans, anything I wanna turn off other than my kids' ceiling fans and my master wing. <clears throat> so my master wing is unaffected. My wife's in there getting ready for bed. I hit night, turns the house off behind me, I go to bed. So those are the, 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 the main keys of automation. Those are the things, those are like the staples and the things we do always. But I wanna go back to hiding everything. So poor man's panelized lighting, as I call it, is a really cool feature because I love having something like this. You come in your house and imagine it says, welcome, away, you know, uh, outdoor lights. You know, you have some control, party, whatever. So at your foyer, you've got some zone control of each individual light load that we have now hid, and then you've got one or two spots for some extra cool stuff um, there as well, like home and away, that kind of thing. You come into your kitchen, you got, you have grilling, you've got, you know, all, all this other stuff, cooking. You know, you can put buttons on here, and I literally put it sometimes with a cooking with a little dot on the top, just because it's funny when people see it, because it's lit up. Um, <clears throat> but I do that uh, just because it's, you know, it's nice to go, hey, what do I, what, what lighting do I cook in, you know? So I cook with, my counter's on, my can's at 50, and maybe my pendant's on at 50. And so I can hit a cooking button and, and program that scene to do that. Um, I can also do it by voice. So, um, you know, enter Josh AI. Josh AI is the new version of voice control. Well, it's not new, okay? It's old, it, it's like 10 years old, but they kind of didn't do it the way that they're doing it now the whole time. So what they did was um, Josh AI, is basically an overlay. So before they were trying to become their own automation company, and they are from to some extent, but they still can't control things like, um, you know, all the TV manufacturers, all the sources, stuff like that. So what they did was um, they partnered with uh, Control 4, and <clears throat> it's basically an overlay. So take everything Control 4 can do, which is everything, literally, um, and they have crappy voice control like Alexa, and I just threw it in the trash. Um, I'm gonna do a whole deep dive on what Josh can do, but I'm gonna show you just a sneak peek and a little bit of it here. Um, the reason it's so cool, right, is so with Alexa in Control 4, you used to have to say things like, turn on, turn off my house. Turn on, turn off the lights. Like, it was this crazy thing because that's what told it to do it. Well, with Josh, you can actually string commands together, okay? So I can just say, I can say words like all. I didn't program it to know all when I said turn on all the lights. It just looks at the logic of what I said and realizes it wants all the lights on. I can just turn on and off individual light loads as well. 
I can do the same thing with shades. I can open a shade or I can open all the shades. Um, it's going to get real bright in here if I do that though. Hey Josh, open all the shades in the living room. So by me saying all the shades in the living room, it's only opening the shades in the living room. I did not program it to do that. So that's the beauty of Josh. The beauty of Josh is I don't have to do a thousand lines of code. And here's the crazy part. It's not cheap, but you can actually program it yourself as a user. You can go in after the initial setup is done. It's pulled in all your devices. You can go in there and create your own scenes. All this stuff it is full user friendly. Um, so it's really, really cool in that way because it allows the user to do a deep dive in and change, you know, schedules, timers, programming, um, scenes, what you want it to hear. Um, you can even make it say specific things back to you, which I think is really, really cool. So we have two scenes here that is really, really neat. So um, for instance, the automation goes this far. <clears throat> I sit here in the pillow where the pillows are. My wife sits over here. We watch the kids uh, play in the pool. Okay. So at, uh, during the daytime, um, you know, I tell Josh, Hey Josh, going swimming. I actually programmed it to open the shades 50%. So it's closing the shades 50% because it already knew the state, which is actually really cool. Oh, maybe it was 75, but I just open them. So if they're closed and I, it knows I want to watch the kids swim when it hears that it opens it up. Hey, Josh, night swimming. All right, so a bunch of things just happened, okay? And I wanna explain, so it's really funny. At nighttime, there's a lot of glare um, out there. And so we can't really see the kids in the pool because there's like this weird glare in the glass when the lights are on inside. So when I tell it night swimming, it knows that I want to turn all the lights in here off. So it turns off the living room lights, all the kitchen lights. It actually turns on the patio lights and it even turns on um, these super, super bright spots that are over there, which you can't see because it's the middle of the day, but I promise you they're on. So, and the patio lights are on. <clears throat> so that tells me I only want this dark and I want everything outside light. And now we can see the kids in the pool. These huge spotlights over there turn on, illuminates the whole pool at night. And then I can go in and change the pool colors and do all that kind of stuff too. Um, but it's really, really important to understand like the capabilities of Josh and really, really how far it can go and how, um, you know, just, I just started unplugging Alexa's in my house. Um, they were, you know, they were listening to me. They were selling me. If I have a hole in my sock, I had 5,000 advertisements of socks and that's just not my thing. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I needed to get that out of here. It doesn't listen to you. It doesn't try to sell you anything. It is only AV specific, but you can string commands together, right? So as long as you're, you know, in earshot of it and I hope it just works, you know, right off the bat, but I can string commands together. I can say, Hey Josh, close all the shades and turn on the pendant lights. So now I've strung commands together, which you can't do with other automation systems. So I say, Hey Josh, you know, turn all, <laughs> he's still with it. Um, you know, you do have to be closer to it because the microphone is not as sensitive. Um, but it's a really, really special thing. I really like it. Um, I've, I've kind of only begun to play with it. So I'm going to tell it to do more things, um, over the course of time. And, uh, let's switch back to lighting and then I'll close. So in my bathroom, um, I've got a TV in my shower, so I've got the same Sierra TV that you would see in the uh, first walkthrough uh, that we did this week um, <clears throat> of the monster house with uh, with all the all the with the lazy river and all that stuff. So that, I have that same Sierra TV, and his shower turns on my TV, turns the lights at fifty percent. Um, that's how I like to shower, and then her shower turns off the TV and plays music only, hundred percent lighting. Um, and then I've got, you know, chandeliers and I've got mirrors and all those buttons on there. It's just really special to get rid of the ugly five bank of lights that's in every room, swap it out with that. It doesn't cost you any more money. It's just a little more planning if you were going to do lighting control anyway, anyway, anyways. Um, but it's, it just takes a little more planning and you know, you do have to get with the electrician and kind of, you know, do a deep dive on where we're going to move these switches, um, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, all the C4 switches are really cool because, you know, if you come over here, they're all etched too. So not just these buttons here, but even these buttons here, and you'll get a close picture of Josh there, but you know, all the buttons are etched. So you know what they do. Um, they're, they're backlit at night. It's really, really cool. Um, so it's nice to be able to, to be able to go to a light switch and you're like not hitting five light switches if you don't live there. 
um, or if you have a guest or something, they know what light they're turning on. So um, lighting control by C4 is um, very special. Uh, they have adaptive phase dimmers, so they see the load, they see whether it's gonna be an LED or a halogen and all that kind of stuff and what the load is and they'll kind of give you feedback. Um, that light will actually give you feedback of what that load is and whether it can, they can handle it or not. Um, you can also double tap and triple tap things. That's a super special deal. Um, as I leave any, any part of my house, like the hallway over there, if I'm leaving the hallway area, I can double tap that light switch and it tells the whole system to turn off everything behind me. So I have it turning off all the lights in the bathroom, the TV in the bathroom, the audio in the bathroom, you know, the ceiling fan, the light in the bedroom, like that, just, that's my way of telling the system, turn it off. If you do like a Lutron lighting system, for instance, the light switches themselves are great, not any more great than Control 4, but also great. Um, the light switches are great, but they can't do that double tap thing. And so you can hide double tap, triple taps. Um, you know, you can do buttons for intimacy. You can do anything you want, right? You can hide these buttons so clean ladies don't accidentally hit them. You know, if you want the shades to close and berry white to come on and whatever you feel like doing, you triple tap the light switch, you know, happy times. Um, so, you know, automation can be very, very cool. Um, it can, you could take it as far as you want. I mean, we literally have clients I have a client that automated, automates it so that when his car pulls up in the garage, um, he hits a specific button if he's not alone, and it actually lights a pathway to his master bedroom, and only the master bedroom. So we've got floor LEDs that light a path to his master bedroom. Not anything I could ever show on YouTube, because I'm sure he doesn't want anybody knowing he does that, but that's how far you can go. So, um, you know, with us, sky's the limit. My whole home is automated from thermostats to lights to, um, you know, really anything you can possibly imagine. TV, you know, hey Josh, turn on the Apple TV in the living room. Input switch to Apple TV. So he's making it happen right now behind the scenes. It'll come on in a second. So if I know that I'm trying to watch TV, I'm coming in here in the morning and I'm like, hey, you know, getting the kids sandwiches ready for school and all that kind of stuff. And I want to pull up YouTube, YouTube TV and watch my show. I can pull it up, then I can grab the remote and control it from there. If you've got satellite TV, um, Roku can do a little more uh, sometimes. So if you've got a streaming device or, or like satellite box that you can go to a specific channel, you can go that far. Um, you can do anything you want with the streaming devices. Sometimes it takes another layer of control. So it is what it is, give and take <clears throat> on that. But um, that's a really cool feature, obviously. I can make that do anything you want. If I'm done listening to that, I can switch over. Hey Josh, play Morgan Wallen radio on Pandora in the living room. So if I'm in a country mood, I feel like, you know, I'm going to cook or something like that. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to listen to music. It actually turns the TV off and here we go. And that's actually telling control four to play music in my living room. And it's telling a surround sound receiver to switch the input. Um, there's a ton of things that just happened to make this happen. And, uh, you know, Josh AI and Control 4, very, very powerful tool. I hope to talk to them both and see them both at Cedia and uh, do anything that's new and stuff like that. And if it's too loud, hey, Josh, turn off the living room. So it's that easy, but if it's that loud, you might not even hear me. I will try to um, follow up with some videos from Cedia, show you any new stuff that's out. I'll be doing, you know, some shorts, some different videos there. It won't be with a professional videographer with this fancy doodad he's uh, holding here wanting to crack because I've been talking too long and uh, like and subscribe um, I'll try to chapter this one so you can you know you can kind of bounce back and forth and I really appreciate you guys see ya